Karai Paneer, the rustic dish of North India, is the simplest and one of the most underrated recipes. One can easily have this dish in any of the restaurants where everyone has their own unique blend of spices. But originally, it is not a gravy based recipe at all, but a semi dry recipe that lacks the richness of cashew or even cream. The dominant flavor of this dish is of coriander powder and bell peppers. It's usually garnished with ginger juliennes with a very slight touch of fresh coriander leaves. Welcome to my channel Kitchen Kilogram. Let's begin with karai paneer in a way it's supposed to be made. First we will start with the karai masala. I'm using a scissor to cut the whole Kashmiri red chilies so that they can be roasted evenly. We have 1 tablespoon of coriander seeds that we will dry roast till it's golden brown. Make sure to stir every 10 seconds to roast evenly. Best way to cook karai paneer is in an iron karai where it's traditionally prepared but since I don't have that I will use a normal deep cast iron pan to give it the same flavor and texture. I have also blended uh, Kashmiri chilies with cherry chilies to give extra spiciness and this way I might not have to use that extra chili powder at the later stage. Once it's roasted, I can add all the other spices, peppercorn, big cardamom, cumin seeds and bay leaf till they give us a crackling sound. You can see the composing of these spices in the description of this video. I'll leave it aside to cool down and we'll later grind it till then we'll cut the vegetables. We just have to cut these uh, bell peppers, tomatoes and onions in triangular shapes. While cutting the tomatoes, make sure you're deseeding them and taking out all of its pulp. You can later use this pulp in the tomato gravy. The next is to fry the paneer in about 2 tablespoons of oil and make sure that the paneer is dried with kitchen towel before placing them in the hot oil. We can grind the dry karai masala till paneer is getting fried on a low flame. You remember we kept it aside to cool down. Well here it is. But make sure not to turn it into a powder. It's supposed to give some texture at the end. And now that the paneer seems done, we'll take it out and put it on a kitchen towel and sprinkle some salt in it. Now in the same pan, we have to add a little more than an inch of a ginger and 10 to 12 garlic cloves. We'll add about a teaspoon of cumin seeds and let it fry for 10 seconds. So right when it's done, we will add 2 chopped onion medium size and saute them till they are slightly pink in color, else your gravy will become too dark. Right when they are a little bit pink in color, we can add a teaspoon of salt followed by roughly chopped tomatoes. So once it's about 80% cooked, we will transfer it to the grinder and cool it down. And once it's cooled down, we can turn it into a puree. When you're transferring it to the grinder, you can simply scoop it out. This cast iron pan is of 4 kgs and I have dealt with the pain it caused me to transfer it like this. In the same pan, we have to put approximately 1 tablespoon of oil and saute the vegetable that we cut triangularly. But before that, we'll add 4 to 5 large garlic cloves to give the oil some flavor. Once the garlic is a little bit brown, it is time to add the vegetables. So when you're sauteing the vegetables, make sure that the flame is high because we need to keep it crispy from the outside and juicy from the inside. This is definitely the most colorful part of this video. So make sure you watch it till the end and don't forget to subscribe. As you can see the flame is high, we will saute them till they just develop a little crust and char on the outside.
So after in about 3 to 5 minutes, we will turn down the flame to very low and add the kadai masala that we prepared earlier. It's about 1 tablespoon and since this masala is already cooked, we will just mix it with the vegetables for about 30 to 45 seconds. Right when you feel the smell of coriander powder, it is time to add the puree of onion, tomato and ginger garlic that we prepared earlier. Now, since this puree is 80% cooked already, we don't have to give it much time on the stove. And the pan in which we are cooking has not lost its heat anywhere in the process. And this is one secret of this recipe. You don't have to change the pan. Now perfect time to add some salt. If we would have added some salt earlier with the vegetables, they would have lost all its water in minutes. But now our vegetables are still juicy from the inside. So always add salt at the later stage. So once the salt goes in, it's time to add the fried paneer. And remember to measure the salt as per the gravy. Because there is already some salt sprinkle on these fried paneer. And add some flavored water from the grinder jar. But don't add too much water. It's not a gravy based recipe. But once you add this water, all the spices will blend in well and cook well of course. Just about 1 minute after adding the water, it's perfect time to check the seasoning. So when you cook this with different colored vegetables, it surely looks great. And I tried it with just the green capsicum. But there was no change in the flavor. It was just the same. So now it looks done and we will just pour it onto a plate and I will try this with chapati or a lachcha paratha. Maybe lachcha paratha is better. I'll try that. So there is no need to add cashews or cream. Just add a little bit of ginger julians or maybe grated ginger on top of it with some lemon and it just tastes great and authentic. Cream is only added uh, to make the recipe rich and this is definitely not one of them. So I'll be back with my next recipe next week. Make sure to like and subscribe.